Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Mark Fischette. And I'm Scott Guerin, the research and development chef here at Modernist Pantry. And never has the test kitchen looked more test kitchen-y <laughs> for a WT episode than this weird mad science experiment, which is a great follow-up to our last episode, which covered some cool plating stuff. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about foams today. And, and culinary foams are, are a nice way to make your plate look uh, a little bit more presentable, kind of like we talked about with our plate presentations, and just add a little bit of intrigue to a uh, common flavor. Everything yeah. here on, on this table is made of uh, cranberry, but you can do it in many different ways, so it adds a lot of intrigue. So when you eat it, you get cranberry, but in a different way. Yeah, so, all right, you've probably seen foams, you're familiar with foams, whether you've seen it on Instagram, on an amazing piece of food, or the top of a Guinness, technically. <laughs> Um, and, and so I, that leads into, there are some, not all foams are created equal. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of what we'll talk about today, but there's kind of two foams to begin with for texture wise, right? Yeah. So just briefly, the, the most common foam that people, almost everyone has eaten is whipped cream or a type of whipped cream. Oh snap. Yes. Yeah. So, so people don't really think about it, but that's absolutely that. Or meringue. So people have eaten foams many, for many, many years in, in culinary arts, but now we can make foams of any flavor. Right. So, uh, we have a few different ingredients that we're going to go to, uh, but we should talk about the types of foam, yeah. right? So we have here, which is a, a large bubbles, and this makes a lacy foam. That's okay. what I like to call it, a yeah. lacy foam. And then we're gonna have a, another type of foam, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, which is either dense or creamy is what you wanna call that foam. Sure. So it really depends on what you are looking for in your recipe or on your dish is going to gear you towards which one of these ingredients is going to give you that right foam and it's also going to give you added benefits outside of the foaming. Yeah. Sorry, I keep getting just lost in this. Yes. This is the coolest looking thing. <laughs> All right, and and so there's the dense foam, there's the lacy foams, um, and then we're also going to talk about the different foaming agents because like you said, there's a lot of them to choose from. We'll go through where to choose the right one and the one that's probably the right choice for anything. Mm -hmm. That's some foreshadowing. So uh, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, the tools you're going to need to make these foams. Good call. So let, let's talk about how am I going to actually make foams? And then we can get into which one is best for me. So first we have this, it's called a magic wand and it's a battery powder um, aerator pretty much. And then I'm going to put it in and I'll, I'll do a quick little demo just to show how it works. So yeah. I'm going to take this, I'm going to submerge it into a liquid that has a foaming agent. So I'm going to take it and as it starts going, I'm just going to bring it just out of the liquid. So it starts to incorporate some water yeah. or some moisture into um, or I'm sorry, oxygen into the water, and boom, you're gonna have a nice foam that's going to start gathering on top. And this is actually doing uh, all the liquid at once. Oh, I this see, yes, yeah. so you can see yeah. it getting a little bit more. Yeah, and there's a bunch around the side. I kind of did some right before too, so there's a lot of air already in. Yeah. This is gonna make a nice lacy foam. So if you're doing like a small amount of, uh, of moisture or a small amount of water, you're going to have to sit there and do it you know hand by hand and that's totally fine if you're doing this for a dinner party or yeah. or if you're doing it in um you know a, a small serving restaurant and but if you're you get doing the foam you just kind of scoop it out right? yeah so so we're going to go to another lacy foam that's uh made out of the same ingredient but if you're doing a catering party or if you just have a ton of friends over you have a cocktail like a signature cocktail that you want yeah. to show off and you want to put a nice foam on it you want to use this this is called the magic air maker and what this is, is it's actually on, it's pumping out foam, but it's oh, ex snap. Yeah. extremely quiet. Uh, and I have a little container in here with about a quart of liquid, and I'm just constantly making foam either for plates foam for or days. for uh, desserts oh or gosh, cocktails, and you can see, and this is an extremely stable, beautiful, lacy foam that you can see. And we'll just let wow. it get a nice little drop, right? And this will constantly make foam for about an hour, two hours, it didn't, until you run out of liquid, pretty much, or, yeah, or yeah, until yeah. it's below the the aerating uh, stone that is in there. And like you had said too, so so you, when when we started the video, you may have noticed a few things. Um, we have some phones that are out. This foam is being made, but uh, when you say stable, it's worth noting. Like you're not really seeing any of the foam. Pop. We should hurry up with this episode because this is going to start taking over. Uh, you're not seeing any of the bubbles really pop. So when you say extremely stable, we mean extremely yes. stable. So it'll stay. Uh, I've made a, a bucket of foam this size and allowed it to sit for an hour. Yeah. And um, it, it doesn't really dis... It'll go down maybe about 10, 20%, but sure. you're able to hold it and then plate it easily. Oh now, the last piece of equipment is just a, a whipping siphon. And here I have um, 
my cold liquid with the foaming agent sure. in a whipping siphon. I charged it twice with N2O, so nitrous oxide. So I'm just gonna give it a shake. And then we'll see the difference between a lacy foam, you saw like those large uh, yeah, yeah, bubbles, yeah. and then we're going to see a dense foam here. And it comes out. Oh, and you can see that beautiful dense foam that almost looks like a yogurt, right? And yeah. we can do just like we did in our plating video or our, uh, our last video with fluid gels. You can make a beautiful oh. little spoon push with that. So it's a lot lighter than it looks, though. This is really, truly kind of airy. You said it looks like a yogurt, but it's not. Yes, it, it, it's extremely airy. So you can put it on top of a drink and it'll float. And we actually have a drink on our, um, on our blog at blog.modernistpantry.com. It, it's a kind of a reformed, a reimagined uh, Harvey Wallbanger. Oh, yeah. So, so we have you know, the cocktail. We have uh, um, an orange, like a frozen yeah. sphere of orange, and then we have the Galliano that is on top that's been foamed. And, and this works with alcohol. You just have to dilute. If it's liquor, dilute it by about 50%. If it's beer, you can just probably put it right in there and it'll work just fine because the alcohol content's so low. Sure. But if I take this, and I'll just show you the side-by-side, -side, a nice side-by-side -side comparison of a lacy foam next to that dense foam, and you can see this is the exact same ingredient with two different preparations in the exact same liquid. Yeah. So you could use this potentially on a menu in two different ways with only doing the prep for one item. Oh my goodness Because gracious. I take the same liquid, I either put it in here or I put it in there, and the N2O charges it in a different way, yeah. and the Magic Air Maker will make it a nice lacy foam, and they're both gorgeous on a plate. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic, and I'm kind of, all right, we are now, we're not nine minutes in the video. We're nine minutes since these things have been plated and gone down. So now's probably a good time before they go away on us to talk about um, the different ingredients that are commonly yes. used. And actually, you want to swap spots and throw I'm, I'm going to start here okay. because we, we've been talking, we've been using this one, and this is called foam magic. And this is personally my favorite ingredient for oh, yeah. foaming because I can make an extremely stable foam that is either lacy or dense. Um, it holds really well. If I put this in the refrigerator, I can use it tomorrow. Uh, it's very versatile in, in making foams and it's unbelievably stable because I can leave these out for an hour and they yeah. will be nice and stable. We can go down the line and, and these ingredients um, have different purposes other than just foaming. They work great for foaming, yeah. but if you want to use something like uh, soy less than powder, soy less than powder works great in emulsions. So if sure. you wanted to make a uh, vinaigrette, you could use soy less than powder. It's used for like vegan mayonnaise and items like that. So you can make really beautiful emulsions, but it also is probably the most common in making foams. Uh, this was the first one, hey, this foam looks really nice. Let's put it on a plate. And that's kind of where the uh, the trend of foamings came from huh. or foaming agents came from. The next one is sucrose esters. And we actually have a, a recipe on the website that uses sucrose esters to help stabilize uh, frosting so that you don't get the weeping effect, you know, the oh, water yeah. that comes out of frosting. So you can add a little bit of that. Oh, that was in but, a, was that, a, we also talked a little bit about that in a, in a Ask a Chef, I think, too, Yes, right? yeah, yeah, we talked about that as well. So the soy less than powder is, is the far uh, to your right. Uh, the sucrose esters is the one next to it. And you can kind of see that they're starting to dissipate and they're almost like coming together, meeting in the middle, right? Yeah. So those ones are starting to lose their air. And that, that's uh, an issue with these two, but this has also been 10 minutes. So if you plate something, you put it on there and then you send it to the table, you're still gonna have that nice, beautiful foam and you're gonna have an ingredient, as you can see, they're in a different color packaging from the other two, uh, yeah. that does more than one thing. So these work for emulsification and foaming. Yeah. The, the third one we're going to talk about is polysorbate 80, which amazing for emulsification. Probably one of the best emulsifiers really? out there. Yes, okay. food, it's food grade polysorbate 80. Uh, amazing emulsifier. You can do a nice lacy foam with this. And unlike these two, these two only make lacy foams. You can't put them into a whipping siphon and you can't make a dense foam out of them. Oh. But with the polysorbate 80, you can make a dense foam out of it. You can make a lacy foam out of it. And you can make... Uh, a, if you add this to every single emulsion, uh, you know, dressings, whatever you're doing, it's really going to help. And, and some people don't even realize that baking sometimes needs emulsion because you have all the fat that's in the recipe. Oh, yeah. And this will help too, you know, in very small amounts. This will help hold on to all uh, the moisture and the, the fat without staling. So it'll help with the staling process. The only downfall of polysorbate 80 is you need to use it in a very small portion uh, and you need to use it with something that is very flavorful because this has a, a slight flavor to it, an okay. aroma more than a flavor. It doesn't really taste like anything, sure, but sure. it has an aroma. Um, 
So you want to have you know very powerful flavors. So something that is as as nice as this and does so many things, there's always a little you know something to it. Right, but right. but but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So it, it just has a slight flavor. It works amazing, and you can see it right here on the plate. Yeah. This last one, you can see it's starting to break down, but it's definitely the most the highest, the most firm uh, foam, lacy foam that we have on yeah. this side. And this is actually an amazing ingredient called Versa Whip 600K. We just call it Versa Whip sometimes. It's you take a small amount of this and you add it to any liquid. It could be straight vinegar, and you can make a meringue out of it. And you can get it to you know a nice soft peak meringue. Yeah. We use this in our. Trying to envision a vinegar meringue. Yeah, it's actually kind yeah, of. Yeah, it, it, it looks if you make it out of balsamic vinegar, it's like a nice brown meringue that you can put on something, and, and you can see how well it's foamed here, right? It, it's, yeah. It's gorgeous. And so, now, for comparison, everything we have is the same source liquid. We've just. The different yeah, I took a, a base liquid. Uh, you know, I, I rendered some cranberries into a nice juice, and as then one does. And, and um and then I made all these beautiful liquids, sure. and I put different agents in them just to show you how they work. So the first whip 600K makes an amazing, um, you know, meringue-like foam. Yeah, and we have an, a recipe on blog.modernspantry.com uh, for vegan marshmallows and those vegan marshmallows yeah. use this and our vegan gelatin kind of to work together yeah. to make a perfect vegan marshmallow that doesn't need you know a dense agar or something like that you can use this i think the trick with that one is that used a tool that we didn't cover because it's not really what we normally think about with terms of the magic air maker or whatever that would use the stand mixer right? yeah i use yeah. the stand mixer and it just took up a bit too much yeah so thank you though yeah i use the stand mixer for this so you could try and do it with the uh, the magic wand actually probably that would be the best um but i would absolutely use a stand mixer because you want those you know stiff peaks that you would normally find in, in a meringue when you're yeah. making this Cool. All right. So now, how how far are we into these? So fourteen, 14 minutes, minutes on pretty much yeah. everything. The these guys have fallen quite a bit from their original. We see even the, in the bowls uh, a little bit yep. more so. So all these were foamed in the bowls. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this one came out of a stand mixer, but they're dissipating one by one by one. Over over here with the foam magic, um, the dents has kind of lost some of its smaller air bubbles that were on the surface. But golly, th th golly, that's a weird. Yeah. Word. Look at you. Th this is incredible. It's still. Yeah. It it it, it, like it holds up pumped. really well and. and and this just keeps pump, pumping out bubbles, and I'll go towards the side because that's where the older, you know, bubbles are, and they're still the older bubbles. Yeah, well, more they've, been, bubbles. they've been here longer. Yeah, um, so the but seniors. they're still holding on beautifully. It, it maintains all the flavor. Oh it gosh. doesn't mute the flavor. Yeah, so you can do really fantastic things with these uh, these culinary foaming agents. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so why there's so many to choose from? They're all great. Mm -hmm. Polysorbate 80, I think, kind of stands out as like, okay, this is yeah, it's a powerhouse. Of it really does a lot of things. So with that, for foaming, why is foam magic your favorite over all of these options? I like foam magic. Can we it's, switch places? This is really yeah. Let's me switch off. places. This is uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> That was this Put is your a, good a side. Swirling by the way, effect there. If anybody asks. Um, so, <laughs> so um, foam magic is, is extremely stable. You can see it on this plate right here. I really love the dense foam it makes. Where yeah. polysorbate 80 does make a dense foam, this one makes just a, a foam I really love when it, it's first plate. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do another one just because you can see the color that comes out of it. And I doubt that any uh, any plate that's really gonna Day on a table isn't going to stay there for 14 minutes. So right, when it right. gets to the table, it's going to have that Good. nice bright color uh, and the the spoon push you can get out of it. The the just the, the texture of it's really gorgeous, yeah. and you can definitely tell by these lacy air bubbles that um, yeah, I want that <laughs> on a plate because it stands up. I don't have to worry about it coming out wrong. I don't have to worry about my guests getting a plate that now just has a thin runny liquid on it that looks yeah. unappetizing. That stands up. <laughs> It also stands up on top of a cocktail, uh, hot or cold, it, it works great. So yeah, yeah, that's one more thing we didn't really talk about with this, is that if I wanted to take this and I wanted to put it into uh, like a steam table and, and keep it hot, I right. could absolutely keep this hot and then pump out a hot foam. foam. Oh. So if you make like a mushroom nage or, or something that's really, really intensely flavored, and then you aerate it and then you make a beautiful, intensely flavored hot uh, you know, yeah. sauce, 
it, it's, it's really nice on a plate. Now, it's so often when we're talking about great plating experiences that usually there's a big catch, right? Like I'm thinking spherification, right? Where it's like, okay, it's amazing, you can do it, but you have to precision measure the calcium content, know the source of your water and pH values and temperature. <gasps> and there's a lot. Yes. <laughs> is, is this one of those things where it's like, yeah, you can pretty much do anything you want, but you're gonna need to buffer and cool and all this stuff? So, so pretty much th this is stable for acids and whatnot. What I would suggest if you're going to be making a, a lacy foam like this, uh, if you wanted to do it with something that you're going to saute, that little bit of oil is going to transfer into here. Uh, oh. Usually with the lacy foam, the dense foam, it, it'll hold on to that oil okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the oil will break the surface tension of the bubbles and it'll dissipate relatively quick. It'll that still make sense. bubbles. Yeah, yeah. But they won't, you know, fill up a, a hotel pan like this for yeah. an hour. So it, sure. it, it will come out and, and they will eventually break, even a small amount, because oil spreads extremely thin over liquids and then it'll just yeah, yeah, yeah. start knocking them down. So, so the only way to really kind of mess it up is to have some oil that just breaks bubbles because that's what it does. Um, hot versus cold? Uh, I would absolutely go with the, the foam magic with hot versus cold. I, some of these won't work with too much of a hot liquid. Uh, the soy less thin works pretty well with yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, but hot liquid will break those bubbles down quick. What if it's very, um, we kind of hinted at this, what if it's very acidic? Acids are fine. Uh, you know, pH is okay with almost all of these. Uh, I haven't okay. found any issues with any of them too acidic. And if you're doing vinegar with these, uh, they're going to be okay, but nothing in the culinary world really goes below yeah. that vinegar acidity, that two pH. So um, it may go a little bit, but you're not getting down to one. At that point, it's not really food. Well, anymore. if it can stand up to vinegar, let's take it a step farther. What about alcohol? You could do alcohol with the foam magic. Oh. Um, I prefer it with the foam magic over these just because I, I know the recipe. I know how to dilute by 50%. So if you have a, a liquor, dilute by 50%. Sure. Make it. If you try to do it uh, with just straight liquor, it's probably going to just, you know, dissipate and turn into uh, a liquid very quick. Sure, but if you do it with something that's already... Beer or, or wine, you should be okay. Low because, alcohol yeah. content. Yep, low alcohol content. Cool. So just if it's, if it's a high proof, take it down yeah. a bit. Yeah, you know, anything around 40 proof, let's knock it down uh, sure. to 20. So it, 20 and below, yeah. it'll, it'll work. Great. And experiment to find the right number for you because there are worse things to be like, oh, extra alcohol. Yeah. Um, all right, and we've got, speaking of alcohol, that's the recipe that we have here. It's one of those cocktails that looks so beautiful, you almost feel bad when your guests drink it and enjoy it because it's a work of art, but at the same time, it's delicious. That's the, I, I want to say deconstructed, it's not I just want to say reimagined yeah. Harvey Wallbanger. It's all the same ingredients and they're in the same glass. So, so yeah. it's kind of hard to say deconstructed. But yeah, it's just reimagined. It's coming to you in a different sense. And then when you drink it, you, you taste Harvey Wallbanger. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's a great recipe. I think we got Cole. We've got a video with that one too, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. the thumbs up from cameraman friend, Cole. Friend Neil will uh, show you how to do that. So that's a really awesome one. Just go watch it. it it's great. It, even if you're not planning on making it, it's, it's just a, one of those things that you just love to watch being made. Um, is there anything that we kind of missed or haven't touched on in terms of either foaming in general or the beauty and the wonders of foam magic? Uh, some people are going to ask, is, is there anything that I can use to foam oils? And we didn't, we didn't bring anything out here yeah. that is for foaming oils um, just because we wanted to stick with the same... Uh, liquid across the board and show you these, but right. but you can foam oils using uh, mono and diglycerides, and you can find those at modernistpantry.com as well. So if you yeah. want an olive oil foam, they don't really react in the exact same way because you're basically thickening that that oil to the point where it will foam out of one of these uh, whipping got siphons. It, got it, got it. But for this, use strictly liquids, uh, you know, water-based liquids, yep. uh, juices, wine, beer. Um, diluted, lick, out, diluted yeah. liquor, things like that. Sure. Uh, sauces work really great. But yeah, so for these stick with liquids, if you want to do oils, check out uh, you know modern diglycerides. Sure. Uh, and because we said mono diglycerides, it's time to remind you, you can get all of these. Uh, and when I say all of these, well, not the glassware and the plate, those are ours, but you can get everything else at modernistpantry.com. So uh, pick which one's best for you. I will say it sounds like if you do a lot of crazy stuff, polysorbate 80 is definitely something to get, have fun with it. If you're looking to get into just getting something for foaming, it looks like the thing on your shopping list is going to be foam magic. Yes. Now 21 minutes into it, 22 minutes into yeah, it, it's still a 
beautiful. It's still staying up. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. This is incredible. Uh, by the way, you're also going to need something to give that foam its foaminess. We'll go with that. Uh, so to that end, you can get uh, the Modernist Pantry, uh, ch the, the chargers. Uh, and You can do the magic wand. You can do the whipping siphon, which we have either ISI yeah. uh, brand or we have Modernist Pantry brand. And yep. then we have the magic air maker, which uh, makes an abundance of foam. So. Yeah. So you can get all that. Uh, if you're looking for inspiration, of course, we have blog.modernistpantry.com. Are you the kind of person that likes this kind of inspiration and recipes and food stuff? You've been watching foam for 20 minutes. You are. Head on over to blog.modernistpantry.com. Scroll down to the bottom of any page. You're going to see a subscribe button. That subscribe uh, field is going to let you put your, in your email. And about once every other week or so, you're going to be one of the first to know about the latest in recipes, the latest in WTF episodes, our Ask a Chef column, so much more. Uh, and, and, and even new and exciting stuff when we have it, like podcasts and things that I can't tell you about yet because it's super top secret. Uh, you'll also find the recipes and everything else at, at blog.modernistpantry.com. Now, if you really love this and you haven't done so yet, you'll also notice if you're watching this on YouTube or at the blog in a YouTube player, you'll see a subscribe button down around here. Be sure to hit that subscribe and the bell button as well. That way you're the first to first to know. You don't have to wait for the every other week update. And do you have friends who love food too? We tend to travel in packs, don't we? <laughs> hit that share. Well, be sure to share this uh, with your friends and family and colleagues. Uh, we're trying to introduce some new ingredients, new ways of doing things. Just kind of make uh, make the food you're making a little bit more exciting, a little bit more eventful, um, or in some cases, just help you pick the right ingredient. If you know you're looking to do something like foaming, well, that's what these guides are here for. So share it around, help spread the knowledge, uh, and we greatly appreciate for it, uh, appreciate you for it. And finally, have you made something amazing after watching this video or before it, and you just have it kicking around on your phone? Head on over to uh, Instagram or and uh, tag us in it, repost it. We'd love to see what you're making. It's great. We love pictures of food as much as you do. So sharing it and seeing that kind of makes our day. You guys do some crazy, crazy stuff. Is there anything that we haven't covered? No, I think we pretty much nailed foaming. <laughs> we have. There's yeah. a lot to yeah, it's it. It's about 20 minutes deep okay. of foaming, so... Yeah, well, I said I was going to talk until the foam magic gave out. And it's not. And, um, you can keep going. Filibuster. Yeah, I've got yeah. some great theories on um, agar. All right, let's... Uh, cool. All right, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us here on WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Guerin. Have a fantastic day.